Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and on today's episode of the Darkroom Knight, I'm going to show you something that I should have shown you years ago. How to mix up a C41 developing kit. I'm going to show you all the tools that you're going to need in order to do it fast and easy, as well as safe in your home. Let's get started. First things first, let's talk about safety. You're going to want to cover up your hands, your eyes, your mouth, as well as your body. For hands, I use nitrile gloves. They are thick, they are durable, and if you wash them, you could probably get a couple of uses out of them. If you can't find yourself nitrile gloves, these cheap blue ones at uh, Walmart will do just fine as well, though they do tend to rip. Next is your eyes. Any hardware store is going to have eye covering for you. As long as there is a protection around your eyes, you should be safe from splashes and powders. Next is your mouth. Now I have a beard, so I use a bandana, but any type of mask that you're using currently will probably be just fine for these purposes as well. And lastly, I have a lab coat. If you don't have a lab coat, no big deal, just use clothes that you're not going to wear anywhere else. You're going to be working with harsh chemicals, and this is a fine powder that, whether you see it or not, is going to be kicked up into the air. And if you want to be developing a lot of color, you want to protect yourself in every way that you can. Next, here is everything that you're going to need in order to mix up your C41 powder kit. I highly recommend having everything before you even buy the kit. Some of this stuff is fairly easy to come by, others not as much. You have a thermometer, a funnel, a stirring stick, a pair of scissors, a one liter container, a sous vide, three amber glass bottles, a flexible tub, and a bottle of distilled water. At least three liters will be required. Let's go over each of these in detail and why you need it. First up is a thermometer. If you can't tell how warm your chemicals are, none of this is going to matter anyway. Luckily, I've used a lot of thermometers over the years, and I find that the best kind is just a plain old cooking thermometer from Walmart. Next, you have your one liter container and stirring rod, and this is what you're going to be mixing your chemicals in. You might want to have three, but you really only need one. If you're mixing them in order, you can easily mix one chemical, give it a quick rinse out, and move on to the next one. Now, while I have a proper darkroom stirring rod, any old baking spoon will do just fine. Just make sure that you don't use it for actual baking after. Same thing goes for this funnel. You can use one from Walmart. It doesn't matter as long as it's plastic. This one is for lab purposes, but there really is no difference. The only thing that I would say is try and get one with a fairly wide mouth at the bottom. Personally, I think this one is the most crucial, and that is three one liter amber glass bottles. Now, the reason why you want them to be glass is that you're going to put these in your sous vide bath, and you want the bottles to sink and not float so the chemicals warm up evenly. Next up is a sous vide as well as a flexible tub that is large enough and deep enough where you can submerge your glass bottles. If you can't completely submerge them, no big deal. As long as you can get two of them in the tub, you should be okay. Now the reason why I say flexible is because you're going to be putting a lot of water in here, and I find that rigid plastic tends to break. The last thing you want is 7 liters of water spilling all over the place. This is going to be useful for you, not just when you're mixing your chemicals, but when you're developing your film. You need to be able to get your distilled water up to a certain temperature without any fuss or hassle. And when you're developing, you need to be able to keep your chemicals at a consistent temperature throughout your developing process. This is why we use distilled water, because it's already in a container. All you got to do is fill up this tub, turn on the sous vide, set it to the temperature, and wait for everything to warm up. Now, while there are sous vides that you can get that are specifically meant for photography, 
This one I picked up from Walmart. I've used it over a hundred times. I've never had an issue. Now in order to figure out how hot we need this water, we're going to have to open up our C41 powder kit. This is a three-step C41 powder kit by Unicolor. Now any three-step powder kit is probably going to be identical. You might even notice that the instructions are identical. I used to use a three-step kit by another company and the instructions were identical, photocopied even. So as long as you've got a three-step kit, you are good to go for this tutorial. This is why you need the scissors, by the way, in order to open the package. Now it used to come in a box, now it comes in a sealed bag. Personally, I think the bag is safer. Let's quickly go over what each of these are. Developer is pretty self-explanatory. That is going to develop the image. Blix A and Blix B get mixed together in your second bottle. That is your bleach fix, or your Blix. That is going to lighten the image as well as remove unused silver from your negatives. And your stabilizer is going to stabilize the image. You're also going to hear this referred to as stab. This is your long-term care for your negative. Here are the instructions for mixing together your chemicals, as well as how to develop your film. I'm going to go over the instructions with you just by reading it right out of this pamphlet, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Here is the entire mixing process. Super simple. A lot of people are scared by C41, but it, it couldn't be more easy. So for the developer, you're going to place 800 milliliters of water at 110 Fahrenheit, or 43.5 Celsius, into a clean glass or plastic container, and while stirring, add the contents of the packet marked developer. Stir well, and then add water to make 1,000 milliliters. Now, why wouldn't you just throw in 1,000 milliliters and then throw in the powder? Because depending on the chemical, the volume is going to be different. So Blix, place 800 milliliters of water at 110 Fahrenheit into a clean glass or plastic container. While stirring, add the contents of the packet marked Blix A, and then follow with Blix B. So you want to add Blix A Stir it up really good until everything's nice and mixed, and then add Blix B and stir well. Add water to make a thousand milliliters. So adding Blix powder to water creates an endothermic reaction as it goes into solution. And it's basically going to bubble for lack of a better term. I'm no scientist. I can't tell you exactly what's going on. All I know is that it can be messy. And last on the list is stabilizer. Add the contents of the bag mark stabilizer to a thousand milliliters of water to a clean container. Mix thoroughly. Stabilizer is not going to need to go into the sous vide. It can go in at room temperature. It is no issue. Now the reason why I've got glass bottles anyway is just for consistency. The thing about sous vides is that you don't want to use them unless they are submerged in water. They have a special heating coil, and there'll be indicators on the side of it letting you know the minimum water needed. It will also sound an alarm if the water gets too low. So the best thing to do is to have the distilled jug in the tub, and then add water until you get to a reasonable amount. Now I placed already hot water in there to help speed up the process. The sous vide will serve to keep it at the temperature. Now, even though the chemicals need to be mixed at 110, I am warming it up to 120. Now, the reason for that is to help warm up the water inside the distilled bottle quicker. You'll see here that the bottle is only partially submerged. That just means it's going to take a little longer for everything to warm up. At the bottom will be the temperature that it is supposed to be and the top will be the temperature that it actually is. That beep that you just heard indicates that it has reached the temperature that you set it at. But just because this says 120 obviously doesn't mean that the distilled water is 120, which is why we need our thermometer. Now this is one of the other advantages of having a cooking thermometer is that you can just poke it right through the top. Now, this is likely to take a little while. If you want to be on the safe side, you probably want to leave this for about a half an hour, but the great thing is that you can just set it and walk away. Okay, it's been about, I'd say, 40 minutes, and the distilled water has reached an approximate temperature of 110 Fahrenheit. Now, it doesn't need to be exactly 110 Fahrenheit. It can be a few degrees over. In fact, if you're going to err, 
err on the side of too hot rather than not hot enough. It shouldn't be like 130 or 140 Fahrenheit, but if you're up to 115 or something like that by accident, no big deal. You just want it hot enough so the chemicals dissolve in the water easily. As mentioned before, the first step is going to be filling this container to 800 milliliters. Then you're carefully going to cut open the container and pour the contents in while stirring. I'm going to now put on my mask. It is pretty thoroughly mixed at this point. Now I'm going to take it up to a liter. A little spillage, but no big deal. I gave a quick rinse and wipe down of my container, of my stirring rod, and my funnel. This next step is Blix A, and there is virtually no difference. 800 milliliters of water, then mix in Blix A. Now here's where things get a little bit weird. Once you mix in Blix B, there's going to be what's called an endothermic reaction, and it can get a little messy. So if you don't have a table like mine, you may want to consider putting a towel or at least paper towel underneath your container. Now, as you can see, mixing Blix A and Blix B added a lot of volume. So it's a good thing we didn't start with a thousand, otherwise we'd have too much and it would be diluted. Blix is by far the messiest of the three, also the stinkiest. Now, obviously this isn't gonna mix clear. The indicator here of when you're good to go, as in when you can pour this into the bottle, is when you don't hear any sandy grinding in the stirring anymore. Look at that. Perfect. Last step on this list is by far the most simple, and that is your stabilizer. This is where you're going to want to use room temperature distilled water. It's got a little tear mark. That's all you got to do. Give it a few flicks, tear it open, and pour while stirring. Stabilizer dissolves almost immediately. And there you have it everyone. What I consider to be the easiest way to mix up a C41 powder kit. I hope this helps. I hope uh, if you've already been developing uh, color film that this gives you a refresher or possibly some easier methods in mixing up your C41 powder kit. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I definitely hope you got something out of it. If you did, perhaps you'll consider joining me on Patreon. On my Patreon, you'll get things like early access and your name in the credits. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic. Classic.